If you add up the number of professional sports franchises in North America, that's men's and women's pro hockey and basketball, baseball, soccer, the NFL, and the CFL, you'll find we have 180 teams. The person who signs the checks is called the owner for all except one of those teams. Ever since he bought football's Hamilton Tiger Cats two decades ago, Bob Young has insisted on being called the caretaker. As we count down to the 111th Grey Cup game on November 17th, let's talk football and caretakership with Bob Young, who joins us now from Greenwich, Connecticut. Bob, it's great to see you. How are you doing? Uh, Steve, a pleasure to be on your show. I'm doing very well, thank you. Excellent. Well, let's start with the title. Why did you decide to forego the title of owner and decide to be called the caretaker? Uh, because uh, I got involved with the Tie Cats uh, because I'm a fan, first and foremost. And I come from a family of Tie Cat fans. Uh, in my family, uh, three boys, my older brother, Michael, uh, had learning disabilities. David and I went to university, did very well for ourselves. Uh, but we always worried about Michael. On the other hand, uh, like many people with learning disabilities, the finest human being you'd ever met and the biggest tiger cat fan that you've ever met. Uh, Michael made a little bit of money on my Red Hat uh, project and very sadly uh, died from melanoma cancer. And I was casting about uh, to do something to honor Michael's memory, the Thai Cats go bankrupt, and I couldn't let Michael's favorite football team uh, and my brother pass away. So that's what got me involved. So I never wanted to be in professional sports. That wasn't a goal, but the opportunity to help the Tiger Cats, Michael's and, and my extended family's favorite team, uh, be more successful than we had been uh, was an opportunity uh, uh, yeah, uh, that uh, I felt I, I, I had an obligation to take on. And I never, as a kid, cheered for the owner. In fact, <laughs> I never had any interest in the owner. This was my team. And so when we started thinking about how are we going to get uh, refresh the, the energy and the enthusiasm for the Tiger Cats, the one thing I could not be was the owner. So I, you think about this one, you go, well, the Tiger Cats have been around for 150 years. My mission, if I had one, because I'm not an athlete, uh, but I am a business guy, so my contribution was to make the team more financially stable so that it could survive for another 150 years after I was no longer able to help. And therefore, all I actually am is the caretaker of the team for some number of years in the middle between this long history and this long future that we're going to ensure happens. It's such an interesting choice because, of course, a lot of people who buy professional sports franchises, and I'm thinking of Harold Ballard of the old Maple Leafs or Jerry Jones of the current Dallas Cowboys, uh, George Steinbrenner of the New York Yankees, they buy these teams because they've got massive egos and these, team, these teams feed their egos. Do you really have that little ego, Bob Young? Uh, so the people I enjoy, Steve, and probably you as well, are people who have low ego and high self-esteem. In other words, they know they're good at what they do, but it's not about them. It, it's about making the world a better place in some way. And yeah, that, that's, that's my contribution to the Tiger Cats. I am a fan first and foremost. Uh, so no, it's absolutely not about me. And if I ever for a moment start to think it's about me, my wife, Nancy, will slap me up the side of the head and, <laughs> and straighten me out. Well, the story I heard from back in the... Now, this is going back 20 years now. The story I heard was that you sort of were doing your due diligence, you asked around town, and what you found was not apathy about the situation the Thai Cats were in, but anger that they, they had been so bad on the field and so bad at the box office, and you thought, apathy I can't do anything about, but anger I like. Can you explain yeah. that thinking? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so 
It, it's one of the cute things about my always wearing my yellow tiger cat hat uh, when I'm playing the role of caretaker, such as on your show. Because when I'm in Hamilton, all I have to do is take my hat off and no one knows who I am. <laughs> so when I was first getting involved, um, uh, I did exactly this. I went to Tim Hortons. I went to the gas station. I went to uh, Longo's grocery store, um, uh, Denninger's uh, uh, Deli. Uh, and I would just engage people in conversation. I just asked them, hey, you know, what do you know about the Thai cats? And yeah, either the anger or the disappointment that the Thai cats were not the team that they grew up cheering for, that the, the experience going to the game just wasn't as, as much fun. Uh, but no one uh, said, who are the Tiger Cats? And I go, hey, I can work with that. You know, <laughs> if people had asked me, who are the Tiger Cats? I might have hesitated, but they were all like me. They were all Tiger Cat fans who wanted the Tiger Cats to do better than they had been doing. Fair to say, though, that financially, this has been one of the worst decisions you've ever made in your business life? You have done your homework, Steve. <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, unequivocally. But I don't make investments. I, I was very fortunate in my career. Um, I did a, a technology open source software company called Red Hat, uh, it did extremely well. The open source software movement that we were part of continues to go from strength to strength. Uh, but I made so much money uh, with the Red Hat project uh, that I no longer have to get a return on my investments. I want to get a return on my investments, don't get me wrong. But I don't have to, which means... I get to invest in things that I care about, things that I think are important, not necessarily things with the highest return on investment. And getting involved in, in my brother Michael's football team was one of those that, you know, it goes back several generations in my family. Uh, I know it meant so much to all of my friends who I grew up with uh, in Hamilton. And it's just one of those projects that has been a, a great pleasure to to me and and my immediate family personally that yeah it a financial disaster sure <laughs> but but value creation it's been a big success well you're going to forgive me because i'm a very nosy guy but i i mean i suspect you've lost tens of millions of dollars on this franchise since you've been the caretaker do you want to do you want to clarify how many tens of millions uh, no, <laughs> unequivocally not, Steve. But I will tell you, the good news is this was our ambition when we set out to uh, Scott Mitchell and Doug Rye and Matty Afnick and, and the rest of the organization. Our mission, yeah, was to win Grey Cups, and, and we've come this close. <laughs> but, but our other equally important mission, possibly more important mission, was to achieve financial stability for the team. In other words, make sure the team was paying its bills and then something, because we can't rely on naive, wealthy people uh, bankrupting themselves to keep the team going if we want the team to continue for another 150 years after we are no longer able to help. And that's the greatest satisfaction that, that as I say, the, the team of, of really smart people we've brought to bear uh, on this uh, operation have achieved. So, no, it, uh, I have not lost nearly as much money as I thought I was going to lose in, I don't know, 20, uh, 2008 after four years of of a disappointing team on the field and trying to make money playing out of old Ivor win with wooden benches without backs to them. Uh, and thanks to the visionary investment of the city and the province in the new Tim Horton Stadium, 
uh, we are now financially stable and we're making money and and it's not it's not only not costing me money arguably the tiger cats are going up in value every year i'm i'm as a guy who went to his first tiger cat game in 1968 i am thrilled to hear that but since you brought the other side of the coin into uh, the equation just a moment ago i am going to ask you about the fact that you have yet as a owner slash caretaker been able to drink champagne out of the gray cup because in 20 years the tie cats have never won it and i wonder how much that does in fact matter to you okay so for the first four years i didn't know what i was doing in professional sports and and we were uh, i inherited a very bad team and i didn't make it much better for the first four years at the end of four years i had a pretty good idea of of what makes a good football guy and it's not someone like me. Uh, so you know, bringing in, as, as I say, Scott Mitchell and, and great guys like Orlando Steinauer, uh, we really have a very good football operation. We haven't done well the last couple of seasons, but eh, that's the up and down of, uh, of, of our schedule and of injuries and all the rest of it. Um, but it does, if you don't count those first four years, the team has actually been quite good on the field. Uh, we, we've been as uh, above average in our number of wins and of our playoff appearances. But we, and we've been to the Grey Cup four times. <laughs> and we haven't managed. And on at least two of those occasions, we should have won. I mean, we lost against Calgary on a stupid penalty on on a, a block that had nothing to do with the play and uh, uh, then we lost against Winnipeg at Tim Hortons Field again we just missed the play by two inches oh, I, I'm going to show it here away. I'm going to show it here Bob because it was three years ago uh, almost three years ago it was December 2021 and 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 the Ticats were in fact a fingernail away from winning the Grey Cup in Hamilton at Timmy Ho's Field. I'm going to ask our director, Sheldon Osmond, to remind everybody about that moment. Here we go, see, Sheldon. I, I thought you were a nice guy, and you're <laughs> going to break my heart again. Well, let's see. Let's but see how ahead. heartbroken we are. Sheldon, go for it. Big second down and goal. Into the end zone for Acklin. Dietrich Nichols was there. It falls incomplete. And it is third down. Now, not to be too overly melodramatic here, but are you still haunted by that play? Because I know I am. I, I'm haunted by 20 years <laughs> of not being able to bring home the Grey Cup to our community here in Hamilton because I know just how much it means to me and it means to the hundreds of thousands of Tiger Cat fans in Hamilton, across Canada and around the world. And it, yeah, and so that's just one example. We had four sh shots at it, we haven't pulled it out. Uh, but it, as an example, Steve, these are fluky things. You go to a championship game, someone's gonna win. It's almost like flipping a coin. As you know, we've launched a, a professional soccer team, the Hamilton Forge. Yep. And uh, in six years of, of the league's existence, we've been to the finals six times and we've won four of them. And we're about to win the fifth uh, this weekend in Calgary. Uh, so you just never know. It, it, it's uh, professional sports, sports at all levels, requires both talent, execution, skill, and this magic, luck or fate or whatever you want to call it. Well, that's what I was going to ask because you've done everything that a good owner slash caretaker is supposed to do to put your team in a position to win. And yet, for the reasons we've discussed, it hasn't happened yet. So the question is, what have you done to tick off the football gods that they somehow just aren't <laughs> smiling on you? Yeah, I don't know. Those gods are, they, they, they're digging that knife in. Uh, but but it's why we're so addicted uh, to sports, and it's why we're so addicted to the Tiger Cats, and and uh, this community that rides the ups and downs with me, 
uh, is what makes it all worthwhile. Uh, you know, I, I, I start getting caught up in my disappointment, and then I realize, no, no, I've got several hundred thousand of my best buddies who are suffering along with me. So we can go out for a beer, we can tell the stories, we can remind each other of just how close we've been. <laughs> and that's why professional sports are so addictive. Do you think about how much longer you would like to own the Tiger Cats for? Uh, so I don't own the Tiger Cats anymore. I am a major investor in the Tiger Cats. And that was done as part of this vision of building an organization that is going to survive any one of us. So this organization is not no longer dependent on Bob Young or Scott Mitchell or or Alan Kestenbaum and Stelco, this organization will go on into the future. And uh, again, that is the thing I'm most proud of in this whole project is my mission as caretaker was to set up the team for success for the next 150 years. How long I'm involved for, Steve, you're going to have to get out your Ouija ball and you can tell <laughs> me uh, the answer to that one. I have no idea. Okay. I, I also want to know, since you and I are both from Hamilton, and I know I was raised properly to hate the Toronto Argonauts, and I wonder if you were as well. Oh, of course. Uh, but it goes beyond the Argonauts. <laughs> uh, uh, as you know, Hamilton is this lovely but very blue-collar town. We, we let our work speak for ourselves. You know, Toronto is this damn white-collar place full of sales and marketing guys, and it's all about the glitz. Whereas in Hamilton, there are so many uh, people like you and me, Steve, who have achieved great success by, by being disciplined and, and by building skills. And, and you run into these uh, organizations who are world-beating organizations out of Hamilton that you and I don't know exist because the, the, the founder or the owners don't brag about their business. They go about making their customers more successful, whether those customers are in Hamilton, in Ontario, or somewhere around the world. And that's that's what I just enjoy about the culture that I grew up in and that I am very much part of, part of. You know, it is who I am. I, I, I'm not a self-made guy any more than anyone else is. I've been blessed with with great role models and and uh, growing up in a great community that has given me skills that uh, have benefited me in many aspects of my life. Wonderful. Let me ask you one last question, and that is, uh, very delighted to hear that the Tiger Cats are on much more solid financial footing now. I'm not sure that can be said about the rest of the league, and the CFL always seems to be sort of, um, you know, run with, uh, what's the expression, on a hope and a prayer. And I wonder if... I, I wonder if your involvement in the league has made it, as an entire league, more financially viable than before you got there. Uh, so I'm not going to take credit for that, although I suspect our success does have something to do with it. So because the Tiger Cats were successful, smart guys like uh, uh, Amar in, in British Columbia or PK in Montreal are attracted to owning teams who might have hesitated to own a team uh, for, you know, if the Tiger Cats were continuing to, to struggle from financial disaster to financial disaster. And so we've given the, the league a little bit of a model to follow uh, as to how to make these teams successful. But more broadly, Steve, your, your observation is, is there only historically. We're actually doing very well as a league right now. The ownership across the league has never been stronger. And our understanding of where we ne need to go to next, Randy Ambrosi, for the last uh, eight years, has done just a great job improving every element of our league. And he's left the league so much stronger. Randy just announced his retirement 
as commissioner. Uh, he, he's yeah, this is our commissioner. Uh, he's left the league in much, much better shape than he found it in. And the next commissioner, if we find the right person, is going to have a an opportunity to uh, really turn this into a world class league and and sell our content uh, competitively in the same way that you know the NFL sells NFL games to Canadians despite not having any teams in Canada. There's no reason we shouldn't be selling our content as as enthusiastically into the states as as they do uh, up here. Gotcha. Well, I want to thank you for being the caretaker of my favorite football team for the last 20 plus years. And um, what does one say at the end of an interview with the caretaker of the Tiger Cats? But Oski Wee Wee. Thanks, Bob Young. Oski Wawa, Steve. <laughs> uh, a great pleasure to talk to you today. Thanks so much.